Welcome to this module on constructing and updating a social accounting matrix. Several definitions of a social accounting matrix, or SAM, or SAM, LS1, are available in the literature. Fofana et al., 2015, defines a SAM as a square matrix describing the transaction flows taking place within an economy during a given period. Round, 2003, further defining a SAM as a comprehensive, flexible, and disaggregated framework that elaborates and articulates the generation of income by activities of production and the distribution and redistribution of income between social and institutional groups. A simple representation of the circular flows of income underlying a SAM is given by this graph. Enterprises combine production factors, for example, capital and labor, and input, for example, goods and services, to produce goods and services. Enterprises generate income through the sale of goods and services to the product market. Enterprises use their income to buy production factors through the factor market and input through the product market. Households generate income through the sale of their production factors, for example, capital and labor, through the factor market. Households use their income to buy goods and services through the product markets. The government generates income by taxing enterprises and households, for instance direct and indirect taxes, and the government spends its revenue through public services, transfers and subsidies provided to households and enterprises. The motivations to construct SAMs is twofold descriptive analysis, and second, economic modeling. SAMs display information on the structural interdependence of different groups in society with the economic system both at the macro and meso levels. SAMs serve as an analytical framework for many economic models. They form the backbone of computable general equilibrium models and fixed price multiplier models. A SAM is a square matrix in which each account is represented by a row and a column. Each cell reflects a payment from the column account to the row account. In other words, incomes appear along rows and expenditures along columns. The commodity rows receive payments from industries for intermediate consumptions, from households and government for final consumptions, and from the rest of the world for exports of goods and services and from all institutions for investment consumptions, for example, fixed capital formation and changes in inventories. The commodity columns make payments to domestic industries for supplies of goods and services, to the rest of the world for imports of goods and services, and to various tax and margins accounts. The industry rows receive payments from selling commodities, in general, they sell one commodity but can sell multiple commodities to the market. The industry columns make payments to commodities for intermediate consumptions, to production factors, for example compensation of employees and operating surplus and mixed income, and to the government, institutions, as taxes net of subsidies. The institution rows receive incomes from factors for example, compensation of employees and operating surplus and mixed income, and other institutions as transfer incomes. The institution columns make payments to commodities for final consumptions and exports, to other institutions as transfer payments, and to savings accounts. The savings accounts receive incomes from institutions and make payments to the investment accounts, for example, fixed capital formation and change in inventories. The main building blocks of a SAM are the Supply and Use Tables, SUT, and the Integrated Economic Accounts, IEA. The two national account tables are combined to build the macro SAM. The construction of a SAM also uses non-national account information, for instance survey data, to improve the representation of social and institutional groups leading to a disaggregated SAM. Supply and Use Tables SUT, are defined by the System of National Accounts, or SNA, of 2008 
as a synthetic presentation of the economic data contained in the national accounts in terms of the origin and destination of goods and services available in an economy during a given period. The SUT is in an accounting framework that ensures the numerical consistency of data obtained from multiple sources, industrial surveys, household surveys, investment surveys, foreign trade statistics, and so on. The SUT consists of two separate and interdependent accounting tables, the supply table and the use table. However, the SUT can be presented as one table integrating both the supplies and the uses of goods and services. The presentation of the SUT as one integrated table does not allow the supplies of commodities for more than one industry or the supplies of many commodities by one industry. In the SUT, supplies in the columns are valued at basic prices, while uses in the lines are valued at purchasing prices. Consistency between supplies and uses is ensured by considering transaction charges, for example, levies, taxes and subsidies, and trade and transport margins. According to the System of National Accounts, or SNA, of 2008, Integrated Economic Accounts, or IEAs, views economic activity in terms of decision-making units or institutional units. The institutions are grouped into six mutually exclusive types of units, non-financial corporations, financial corporations, government units, including social security funds, non-profit institutions serving households, NPISHs, households, and the rest of the world. The economic accounts are integrated through succession and transmission of balances from the production account, the generation of income account, the allocation of primary income account, the secondary distribution of income account, the redistribution of income in kind account, the use of disposable income account, the use of adjusted disposable income account, the capital account, and the financial account. The production account generates the value added by subtracting intermediate consumptions from the gross output. The value added is then transmitted to the generation of income account. The generation of income account receives subsidies and spends this on the compensation of employees and taxes on production and imports and generates the operating surplus for corporations or mixed income for self-employed workers. The operating surplus or mixed income is then transmitted to the allocation of primary income account. The allocation of primary income account receives the compensation of employees, the taxes on production and imports, and the net property income in addition to the operating surplus and mixed income. The balance of the primary income is then generated and transmitted to the secondary distribution of income account. The secondary distribution of income account adds to or subtracts from the balance of primary income, the current transfers, the current taxes on income and wealth, the net social contributions, the social benefits other than social transfers in kind, and the other current transfers. The account generates the disposable income which is then transmitted to the redistribution of income in kind account and the use of disposable income account. The redistribution of income in kind account adjusts the disposable income with the social transfers in kind and generates the adjusted disposable income, which is then transmitted to the use of adjusted disposable income account. The use of disposable income account is spent on final consumption expenditure and savings after adjusting for the change in pension entitlements. The balance of the accounts or savings is then transmitted to the capital account. The use of adjusted disposable income account is spent on actual final consumption expenditure and savings after adjusting for the change in pension entitlements. The balance of the accounts or savings is then transmitted to the capital account. The capital account displays the allocation of savings to fixed gross capital formation, consumption of fixed capital, and the changes in inventories. 
The balance of the account in terms of capital transfers receivable or payable is then transmitted to the financial account. The financial account and other subsequent accounts are not discussed here as they are less relevant in the construction of a standard SAM. A standard SAM is created in three steps. In the first step, the macro SAM is constructed combining the SUTs and the IEAs. In the second step, the factor and household accounts of the macro SAM are disaggregated to improve the representation of the social and institutional groups. In the third step, the disaggregated SAM is adjusted and balanced. The construction of the macro SAM is also undertaken in three steps. In the first step, the SUTs is presented in a matrix format. In the second step, the institutional units are improved using information from the IEAs. In the third step, the macro SAM is adjusted by removing the non-economic accounts. The primary sources of information to construct a macro SAM are the SUT and IEA. The supply side consists of local production, S3, valued at basic prices, and imports, S4, valued at CIF prices. Transaction charges include trade and transportation margins, S5, and taxes less subsidies on products, S6. They are added to supplies at basic prices to generate total supplies at purchasing prices. The supply side describes the structure of industrial production in terms of intermediate consumption presented in an input-output matrix, S1, and the value added, S2. The value added includes compensation for employees, gross operating surplus and mixed income, and taxes and subsidies on production. The use side describes the allocation of local outputs and imports. Total supply of a commodity is used for intermediate consumption, U1, exports, U2, final consumption of households, U3, and government, U4, gross fixed capital formation, U5, and changes in inventories, U6. Information found in a SAM is primarily provided by the supply and use tables, SUTs. The SUTs provide the production at basic prices from industries, S3, which include intermediate consumption of goods and services at purchasing prices, U1, factor payments, for example, compensation of employees, operating surplus and mixed incomes, U2, and taxes and subsidies on production, U3. The SUTs provide the supply of goods and services at purchasing prices, which includes domestic supplies at basic prices, S3, imports at basic prices, margins and taxes, duties, and subsidies on products, S4, S5, and S6. The SUT provides the final consumption of goods and services from households and the government, and the exports, U2, U3, and U4, the fixed capital formation, and the changes in inventories, U5 and U6, all at purchasing prices. The remaining information found in the SAM is provided by the Integrated Economic Accounts, IEA. The institutional unit accounts are built up using essentially three IEAs, the allocation of primary income account, the secondary distribution of income account, and the capital account. In the allocation of primary income account, a particular interest is given to the allocation of operating surplus and mixed income, the compensation of employees, and the net property income. Taxes and subsidies on production and imports are exclusively allocated to the government. In the secondary distribution of income account, current taxes on income and wealth and transfer revenues and payments are computed for all institutional units. The capital account provides information on the allocation of gross fixed capital formation, consumption of fixed capital, and changes in inventories. The IEA is used to inform the allocation of factor income to institutional units, A1 to A6. The IEA is used to inform on the secondary income receipts and payments, 
or income transfers of institutional units B2 to B6. The IEA is used to inform the savings accounts of institutional units C2 to C6. The macro SAM displays several accounts of industries, including an account for financial intermediation services indirectly measured, FISIM. The FISIM are indirect charges for intermediation services provided by financial corporations in channeling funds between depositors and borrowers. The macro SAM also displays several accounts of commodities, including a residual account that records the discrepancies between supplies and uses. The residual account primarily reflects direct purchases by residents abroad, direct import, and by non-residents in a given country, direct export. At this step of the construction of the macro SAM, the FISIM and the residual accounts are adjusted. The FISIM account is adjusted in three steps. First, the FISIM amount is reallocated to industries as intermediate expenses. The FISIM amount is imputed to industries in proportion to their expenses in financial services. Industries' intermediate consumption of financial services is augmented by the imputed FISIM amount. Second, deduct the imputed FISIM amount from industries operating surplus and mixed income. Third, the FISIM accounts are deleted from the macro SAM. The residual account is adjusted in three steps. First, the net or direct import value is computed by subtracting the direct export value from the direct import value. Second, the net import value is allocated to the private final consumption products considering only expenses on imported products. The shares of private final consumption expenditure are computed across products that are imported. The net import value is distributed across these products using the computed shares. Private final consumptions are augmented by the imputed net imports. Use side. Imports are augmented by the amount adjusted for private final consumptions. Supply side. Third, the residual account is deleted from the macro SAM. The resulting macro SAM is composed of several accounts for industries and commodities that follow the SUT classification. The factor accounts display one account for the compensation for employees and one account for the operating surplus and mixed income. The institutional accounts include an account for non-financial corporations, an account for financial corporations, an account for government units, an account for households and NPISHs, and an account for the rest of the world. As a reminder, the construction of a SAM is undertaken in three major steps. The first step is the construction of a macro SAM using the SUTs and the IEAs. The second step is the disaggregation of the factor and household accounts of the macro SAM. And the third step is the adjustment and balancing of the disaggregated SAM. The structure and dimension of a SAM are determined by the interests and concerns of its builders and users, of its builders and users, and the data availability. The macro SAM built from the national account tables display relatively detailed industries and commodities, but aggregated accounts for factors and in institutional sectors. The desirability of a more detailed SAM, allowing for income distribution analysis, justifies the use of survey data to disaggregate the macro SAM. The disaggregation of the macro SAM is undertaken in two steps. First, the factor accounts are improved by adjusting the operating surplus and mixed incomes and by disaggregating the labor account. More concretely, the operating surplus and mixed incomes account is split into a self-employed labor costs account and a capital revenues account, 
and the payments to wage workers and self-employed workers are disaggregated into several accounts according to predefined labor categorization criteria. Second, the household account is disaggregated into several representative categories according to predefined household categorization criteria. Disaggregation of factor accounts, operating surplus and mixed incomes. The macro SAM records two factor accounts, the compensation of employees and the gross operating surplus and mixed incomes. The mixed incomes includes both their own capital and self-employed incomes. Here is how to disaggregate the gross operating surplus and mixed incomes. Compute the self-employed labor costs using a household survey. First, identify individuals' hourly wages, employment time, and other socioeconomic information using survey data. Second, predict the implicit wages using a selected regression method, for instance, Mincer, 1974, or Heckman, 1979. Third, generate self-employed labor costs by multiplying the estimated implicit wage rate of individuals by the time spent in self-employment. Fourth, aggregate the estimated self-employed labor costs following the macro SAM industry classification. Then compute the capital revenue using the macro SAM. An industry's capital revenue is generated by subtracting the self-employed labor costs from the operating surplus and mixed incomes. Then aggregate the industry's self-employment labor costs and salaries and wage payments into one account, the labor costs. Disaggregation of the labor accounts. One, from the survey. Define the criteria to classify labor categories, for example, level of education achieved, professional training, etc. Aggregate wage and self-employed labor costs into the predefined categories of labor in the SAM industry classification. Compute the distributional shares of various categories of labor by industry. Two, from the SAM. Disaggregate the labor payment using the distributional shares computed from the survey. Disaggregation of the household account. From the survey, identify and compute household income by source. 1. Wage and self-employment earnings by labor category. 2. Capital revenues, for example, net activity incomes, dividends, interests, etc and three, internal and external transfer revenues. Identify and compute household expenditures by source. One, final consumption expenditures. Two, transfer payments. Three, direct tax payments. Define the criteria to group individual households into representative groups. For example, decile of expenditure, residential areas, etc. Compute the distributional shares across the representative household groups, across the income sources and the expenditure sources. From the SAM, disaggregate the various incomes and expenditures using the distributional shares computed from the survey. Adjusting and balancing the final SAM. As a reminder, the construction of a SAM is undertaken in three major steps. The first step is the construction of a macro SAM using the SUTs and the IEAs. The second step is the disaggregation of the factor and household accounts of the macro SAM. The third step is the adjustment and balancing of the disaggregated SAM. Issues. When disaggregating the SAM factor accounts, negative values of capital revenue can appear. Also, discrepancies in consumption spending between the national account tables and the survey data can lead to imbalanced commodities and institutional accounts. Solutions. Additional adjustments are made manually to eliminate the industry's negative capital revenues. The adjustment can consist in merging close industries to absorb the negative values by larger positive values of capital revenue. The adjustment can consist in reducing the labor cost to bring the industry's capital revenue to the subsector or the sector average. The commodities and institutional accounts are balanced either manually or using an available program. 
In general, the manual approach is used when the discrepancies are relatively large, while the balancing programs perform better with small discrepancies. Computable general equilibrium models require the use of the most recent social accounting matrix, SAM. The data used to build a SAM comes from different sources, such as national accounts, surveys, government financial accounts, international trade data, etc. The primary source of information for a SAM, for instance the national account tables, are generally prepared every five years or more. Therefore, it is possible to update an existing SAM using the most recent macro and MESO data available, where a new SAM cannot be constructed. Several optimization functions are used to update a SAM. Those commonly used are cross-entropy, CE, RAS method, ordinary least square, OLS, minimization of the cost function of Huber, minimization of Hellinger distance, linear programming, LP. Robinson et al., 2001, and Ahmed and Preckel, 2007, show the superiority of the CE method over the RAS method using the matrix of coefficients or ratios. The CE method is more precise than the RAS, OLS, and LP methods according to Lee, 2015. Gunluck, Senison, and Bates, 1988, found that methods of minimizing distance function, for example using the CE method, are more adequate at the disaggregate level but not satisfactory at the aggregate level. In updating a SAM, Treor, Camara, and Fonten, 2020, found that CE and Hellinger's methods are relatively superior to OLS and Huber's method. Cross-entropy is a method used to solve ill-posed problems, according to Robinson et al., 2001. Balancing or updating a SAM is one of these problems, which is an under-identified problem. Updating a SAM consists of finding a new SAM close to an existing SAM by minimizing the cross-entropy distance between them and respecting all constraints, including the new information and data on the economy. The cross-entropy procedure is implemented in three steps. In step one, use a SAM updating tool and start with running a consistent and balanced SAM. In step two, collect up-to-date macro and MESO data and compute the new structural parameters of the economy. The macro and MESO data of the economy are provided by the statistical office or the international databases, such as the World Development Indicator, WDI database. In step three, introduce the constrained equations associated with the new structural parameters in the model. A simple illustration in GAMS syntax is provided next. This simple illustration is applied to the Kenyan economy. In step one, a SAM updating tool is used with the Kenya 2015 SAM. First, input the label of the matrix accounts, industries from J1 to J42, commodities from C1 to C42, margins M1 and M2, factors F1 to F9, institutions U1 to U23, taxes and transfers TR1 to TR3, and accumulation K1 and K2. Second, the initial SAM, for instance the Kenya SAM, is imported using the GAMS Data Exchange GDX facility. Third, the matrix of negative values is defined and negative values are exposed. Fourth, the SAM initial values are transformed in proportion, for instance between 0 and 1 by dividing each value by the matrix total, TOT. The matrix total is computed first. Fifth, the variables, for instance the final SAM and the optimization criterion, OPT, are defined and initialized here. Sixth, the equations are also defined and initialized. The equations include the cross-entropy optimization equation and two constraint equations. 
for instance, the equality and the unity equations. The equality constraint states that the sum of values for a particular row must be equal to the sum of the values for the corresponding column. The unity constraint states that all values in the SAM must sum up to 1. Seventh, the model is solved. In Step 2, the Kenya 2015 SAM is updated for the year 2019 using the macro data accessed through the World Development Indicators database from the World Bank. The structure of the GDP by expenditure in 2019 is provided by this table. Step 3 starts with introducing the new constraint equations related to the 2019 structure of the economy. These equations are defined and assigned. These equations are related to the ratios of private final consumption to GDP, constraint 1, public final consumption to GDP, constraint 2, fixed capital formation to GDP, constraint 3, exports to GDP, constraint 4, and imports to GDP, constraint 5. Note that a constraint has not been imposed to the ratio of the changes in inventories to GDP. A new parameter, GDP, appears in the new constraint equations. New sets, C, HHD, GOV, FCF, and ROW also appear in the new constraint equations. The new parameter, GDP, included in the new constraint equations is defined and assigned. The new sets included in the constraint equations are defined and assigned as well. We are at the end of this course on constructing and updating a social accounting matrix or SAM. Throughout the course you have been introduced to the notion of SAM in its standard structure. The main building blocks of a SAM, for instance the supply and use tables in the integrated economic accounts, were defined and presented. The steps to build a standard SAM were presented and discussed. Finally, the course ended with the presentation of the procedure of updating a SAM including a GAMS-based application.